Hello. Every day the media is reporting the effects the interest rate rises are having on rents, home loans, food, travel and of course everything else that affects our lives. Is it all just hype or do we really need to worry about our future and that of our children? John Grokey, who is a financial planner, is with me and will answer all of our questions. I can't wait. Hello, John. Hello, Malcolm. You were a regular on this program for so long and we haven't seen you for ages. Where have you been? Um, I haven't been hiding, but uh, I've been around the place. But it's lovely to have you back. (laughs) Thank you. Because this is honestly a worry for everybody because nightly on the nightly news services we're hearing how everyone's going to be affected we won't be able to grow groceries because they're all going up we can't service a home loan because that's all going up is that is it are we really in deep water financially i think in the near term malcolm we are in a different environment we've become comfortable with very low interest rates over quite an extended period and that's not normal um it has been necessary but now we're in a very different environment. Well, it's not normal <clears throat> for some time, but I do remember back in the 90s playing 23% interest to the bank. Very, very In the much recession so. we had to have. It, um, I think that's emblazoned on many people's minds. If you're our age. E- exactly. Because we exactly. lived through it. That's right. That's right. And I guess that experience is when people pick up um, skills that they don't when things are just going easy. It's true, but also, I suppose, depending on how old you are and, I guess, where you are brought up is the issue. So if you've just come into the workforce, you've just got out of uni, you've taken a job or you've just moved from high school into a job, this must be a very daunting thing because every night or every day we're reading about in press, the feeds are coming through Facebook, Instagram and so on about how difficult it's going to be for us all. Will it really in the long term be difficult for us all or do you think this is just a phase? We were talking about cycles earlier yep. and I think it's very important to understand that there is a cycle to all of these things which includes interest rates. We just happen to be in the part of the cycle where interest rates are normalising and it really means that the other half of the cycle, which is very different from abnormal and low interest rates is probably going to challenge a few people. All right, so the world went through COVID and governments did whatever they could to keep everybody moving along comfortably. Mm. Interest rates were cut down to next to nothing. Uh, We all thought, you beaut, this is going to live and stay forever once we get over COVID, but it's changed. Would this have occurred, what's happening right now, would this have occurred prior to COVID, would the same cycle still have occurred, do you think? I think it's that's a bit a, deep and meaningful, it's isn't a, it? It's a great qu- but it's a great question. I actually think we were probably headed for some change even before COVID. Right. I think COVID extended the weakness in interest rates or the, the low aspect of interest rates to try and protect the economy. So some of that was very important, but it's probably put off. They use the term in the media, kick the can down the road, but (laughs) (laughs) I think it it, it just delayed the impact. And some would argue that COVID probably helped prop up some businesses, some households artificially where that might have been... I think it really did. I think, you know, the government was generous enough to do what they did, which which we've often forgotten that a lot of people didn't get the assistance. A lot of people did. And it actually made for a smoother time period when, of course, shops couldn't uh, operate properly. Theatres yeah. like mine couldn't operate properly. Uh, we could operate with only sort of 50% of an audience and so on. And that wasn't enough for people to, you know, to book a venue because they couldn't get their money back through ticket sales, for example. I think um, the other thing with COVID is that just people's perception of how life runs and, you know, even the health aspects of COVID, very different environment where people are isolated. So then you've got the financial aspect. So things will get back to normal, but this is going to take a while. And interest rates at some point will steady, but we're not at that point yet. Okay, so interest rates and the cost of living... It, there's a bit of a seesaw going on, isn't there? And that's with with the way that money is transferred around. Is that how would you describe that? I think the way to look at it is that 
originally the stress for inflation was about supply. Mm -hmm. So people couldn't get enough of stuff to actually supply it. So costs went up because supply was short. Um, that's starting to normalise. But there are other things now which are feeding into this. So inflation tends to be um, a thing that can feed on itself. And so one of the things that is very important as an outcome, and one I guess an indicator, is ultimately inflation and interest rates set by the Reserve Bank need to be somewhat equal. Mm -hmm. We're at distance from that at the moment still. That so means inflation is higher than the interest rates. Correct. So correct. you think that to get back to sort of some sort of balance, so the inflation is where now? Um, if you take food and energy into account, it's yep. probably near seven. Okay. Um, and interest rates are 4.1. Four? Yep. So we've still got a long way to go well, in, the, in those terms. They, one will come down, the other will... Eventually they'll meet. But um, in doing so, the other thing that's very important is that we're in a very abnormal unemployment environment at the moment. So 3.5% roughly is, um, is very abnormal. Normally unemployment is a bit higher. So what we need to see also, unfortunately, is unemployment needs to get back to what it is longer term rather than being unusually Then that low. also means the government's got to find the money to back up the unemployed, doesn't it? Correct. So there's a government intervention that will have to happen. Exactly. But really, the <clears> interest <throat> rates are not from government. The interest rates are ultimately set to try and contain... Um, a living, cost of living um, metric that means people can manage to look after themselves. But this isn't determined <clears throat> by whichever government is in power at the time. This is governed by the Reserve Bank. Do the government really have any say on that? Because this is the big conversation too about the uh, Reserve Bank governor. Did he do the right thing or didn't he? It, it's, um, it, it's probably an easy... Um, blame. Finger to point yes. or blame. Well, there's nine of them. He's just the man in charge, isn't he? <laughs> That's right. Mm. That's right. I think the comment was probably for that group of our community who've never lived through higher interest rates was probably a bit of a confirmation that everything was going to be the same, but it's been everything, anything but it's that. Never, n life is never the same, is it? No. Never. No. I mean, when you look back at our history, and this is often a worry... If we're too young, if, if one can be too young, if we're too young, we do think, because our parents have taken care of us and you've not had the financial pressure and so on, you've gone through school years, maybe university years, you know how to live, you know, very frugally on next to nothing, and then suddenly you're in the workforce and you think, you beaut, I can buy the extra coffee, I can do the extra mm -hmm. Uber, take away, whatever, whatever. And then suddenly your resources are just depleting, depleting, depleting. So saving could well be the answer here if you can. I think, I think saving's part of it, but I think people at the moment are trying to recut their budgets because one of the things about an economy where um, people have to focus on debt simply means that people need to recut their budget to focus on Repaying that, sure. And forced the only, to do it. But the problem there is, so I own a coffee shop, and mm. I don't have the customers coming through anymore. So suddenly, I'm going to be one of those unemployed. Exactly. The flow-on effect is that discretionary spending mm. shrinks because people are forced to focus on other things. Yeah. What's the good advice, John? So let's just take it in ages. So again, a younger person just coming out of school or uni. What should they really start to think about? It's really difficult to predict, but I think it's important to say that we were talking about cycles before. Mm -hmm. There's a point at which, unfortunately, we're going to see a property market weaken over a period of time, and that'll be partly due to mortgage stress, but it'll be due to rebalancing. Now, that's a phrase that's used so often, mortgage stress. Um, but obviously it means, can I pay the mortgage or can't mm -hmm. I? But at the same time, in my head, I'm thinking mortgage stress. So there are clearly opportunities that banks are offering to try and reduce that if possible. But did we buy too soon the expensive house with the pool or with the two-car garage or whatever? Should we have waited? 
Is, is that part of the cause because the interest rates were so low? I think you touched earlier on do governments have an influence on these outcomes? I think there was an influence. The government um, via the Reserve Bank provided the four major banks with roughly $190 billion to lend during COVID. And what will the bank do? Of course, they lend the money out. The money was lent out at something below 2% because the banks got that money at 0.1% from the Reserve Bank. It was almost free. Mm -hmm. So one would argue that that's gone straight into property pricing because demand has been fuelled very strongly during that period. And, of course, the government got quite a bit of that back in tax at the same time. (laughs) Exactly. True. Just hold the next lot of thoughts because we're going to be back in a tick with John Grokey. Our guest on this episode of Our Time is John Grokey, who's a financial planner. Oh, John, if only you you could help everybody, but obviously you can't. Um, Is it because we don't have... Do you think issues with finance is because we don't really have enough education at a younger level as to how to manage money as we grow older? And I'm asked that question now with a caveat over that because... A lot of the people now who are in banks and in lending uh, facilities and opportunities are also quite young. They haven't necessarily gone through these cycles before where interest rates have been high and so on. And so probably trying to do the right thing by their employer, a bank or whoever, they've loaned out money that maybe they shouldn't have loaned out. But the computer said yes, obviously. I think if um, there's a couple of things with this, I do think that there's a generation who haven't experienced um, a rising interest rate environment. And interestingly, experience can't be bought. No. You've got to live through it. You do. And when you've been around long enough, you've lived through some of that a number of times, perhaps. Yep. Um, it's fair I reckon th- every 10 years, actually. I've <laughs> seen in business yep. cycles of about 10 years, yep. roughly. Um, I think that's probably right. So I think the first thing is experience needs to be gathered as you age. You can't get that experience until you've been through it. Um, I think the second thing is perceptions reality. So we've had probably 15 years of interest rates declining and perception is that that's how it will always be. Yes. But we know that in a cycle there is another part to this cycle and unfortunately we're actually graduating into the second part of the cycle. What good news for everybody. But at the same time, this is life, isn't it? This is is. living life. It is. is. So you obviously have to advise a lot of people about a lot of things. So Mm -hmm. people generally would come to you, I assume, to say, help, what do I do next? Or I've been left some money or, um, you know, what are stocks and shares really? How do I invest? How do I look after the money I've got? So we've talked about people who are struggling What about people who aren't struggling? What advice now should we be looking at? We're in a very, uh, very complex global environment at the moment. Inflation is something that is being created in another way by governments around the world. We're in a, uh, a conflict cycle at the moment. Countries aren't getting on as well with each other as they have for a long time. Mm. Again, that's cyclical. Um, and what yes, that, isn't that though? Isn't that? There's a war of some description going on virtually all the time. I'm going to mention something um, which I just thought I'd toss in. There's a film called Mr Jones. Yes. Which speaks to pre-World War II. A young journalist um, is asked by the British Foreign Ministry to go and interview Hitler at the time, pre-World War II. In fact, a lot of people don't realise Hitler was on the front of Time magazine. Yes. Pre-World War II. Yes. Um, But Mr Jones is an entertaining film, but it does speak to the environment that exists, particularly the feeling that exists between the Ukraine and Russia. Um, And at that time, who would have thought the United States and Russia were the best of mates trying to set up the first trade agreement? Well, who would have thought that we're best friends now with Japan? I know. Exactly. Yep. See, it, the interesting thing is we re- before we do anything in life, we really should know a bit of the history before we Absol- move into, Absolutely. for example, a financial situation with buying a house <clears throat> or whatever. Look, everybody talks about inflation, but this word is never often explained 
what is the definition and how does inflation work? So inflation can be um, two particular types. It can be demand-driven. Demand-driven is where wages escalate quickly. People have got more money in their pocket. They demand um, a group of goods that isn't growing as quickly as the demand. Mm -hmm. What we've had, though... So obviously the price goes up. Correct. Um, And on the other side, it's supply side, which is unusual. It's normally demand-driven inflation that we've, in our lifetime, we've seen. This was very much about COVID disrupting supply chain because supply chain was about, um, well, let's go and get one of those. Um, Look, come in tomorrow or in 48 hours, it'll be here. Well, that doesn't work anymore. No, suddenly the groceries started Try and buy a car. Exactly, because none of them are made here (laughs) anymore. Correct. Have we done the wrong thing in this country? Have governments let the wrong thing happen with things like a car industry? I think this was about globalisation. I don't think Australia's isolated in this. I think what we came to understand is that we could get delivery within um, a short period of time. So Mm. why keep stock? Mm. So it was just in time um, process. Now it's very different. So one of the one of the potential issues now, particularly, say, for retailers, if we're going into a, uh, a tighter environment, yep, clothing, is um, goods. we've stocked up. Hang on, people aren't buying. Yep, yep. Maybe. I've got all this money sitting exactly. there, which is probably borrowed in the first place, <clears throat> and I've got to pay interest on that as well. Yep. So people might see sales, so that might be an opportunity. Just getting back to <laughs> just getting back to a couple of good things. Yes, there must be patience. some good behind all of this. Patience it. at the moment in the property market, I think, is very important because as this cycle unfolds, people may find that they can buy better than they can buy today. That's the first thing. Second, who that's would have... Actually, th- that's really important to remember, that comment. Yes. Secondly, who would have thought 18 months ago we were lucky to get 1% on a term deposit, we can now get 5 so savers are being rewarded now, mm. where previously for years they were disadvantaged. While the interest rates were low. Correct. Okay, so what advice would you give to somebody who is trying to save? Or no, no, let's, let's re-ask that question. What advice would you give to somebody who hasn't saved up until now because they just feel it's too hard? Look, an example of that, um, I can speak with one of our family members and um, um, our family member and his fiance are saving for a home. They've got a unit at the moment, they want to get a home. Um, they can't save fast enough to get a big enough deposit to the size they want to because house prices were growing so quickly. Um, I think it's Saving is difficult in this environment mm-hmm. because... So don't feel bad if you're no, not saving a lot. No. But you could put away five or ten bucks a week. It's all a starting point and developing a discipline. And Two I think cups of coffee. Saving, saving is a trade-off. Yeah. What do I give up? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What am I prepared to give up? Like, yes, yes. Because we are going to live longer and we, mm. we want to have the comforts of home or whatever around us. So we really have to make some sacrifice to get that. We don't necessarily need the big screen TV no. as soon as we get well, the We house. don't need four. No, we don't no. need four. <laughs> and who wants a TV anymore because <laughs> we've got a screen on our phone? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and in many ways, <clears throat> that's the other thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're getting... The, the things that we've come to expect a house is made of, like a clothes dryer or a spa pool out the back or whatever luxury that in the past we would have called a luxury that we don't necessarily call a luxury anymore because everyone's got one, so we want one yeah. too. Yeah. So it's difficult, I guess, for Expectations, for expectations. If, if, I can, if I can put it this way, I think expectations have risen substantially in terms of where people expect to start that life journey. Yes, that's true. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. So... Yeah. Um, we just need to think this through, I guess. What advice would you give is if there's such a thing as an average person, mm. which is hard mm. to find, mm. what advice would you give a younger person, say under 25, going into this marketplace for the near future, near future? I think patience with property is important because I think there may be better buying down the track. Yep. Um, I think 
interest rates now are favouring someone saving because they're getting a better rate. I think investment broadly with cost of living rising and discretionary spending shrinking, I think probably investments broadly are going to be softer looking forward, purely because of that economic flow-on effect. That's understandable, of course. Exactly. So companies are finding um, wages are increasing, so their input costs are going up. So even uh, companies will find that potentially their profits are a bit softer as well. Of course. Mm. If you're paying out more and not taking as much in, it's obvious. And that's harder for a company too to to expand or to employ more people or, or whatever. Because there isn't really a boogeyman standing over everybody, you know, saying it's going to be bad, it's going to be bad, because we have the ability to help ourselves a bit. I think adjustment, being sensible about things that you can control, there's a lot you can't control, Mm. but things you can control is really important. Okay, so say Mm. groups of people who are between 25 and, say, 50, Mm -hmm. what should they do? Maybe they've got into the market of a house. Yep. So, so in a situation where people haven't fully grasped the rise in interest rates, and I think there's a very there's an impact still to come because the rise has been so quick, yeah. and therefore people are experiencing their first two or three rises perhaps in their budget, but then there's the next three there's or four more, yeah. that are still going to impact. Yeah. So, I think actually planning ahead for interest rates variable rates that could be six to still go up a bit more correct yeah that's right hold the next thought which will be the next age group and we'll be back in a moment to find out the answer welcome back john groke is our special guest john we've talked about people under 25 from 25 to 50 what about people over 50 now Perhaps they've either got their own home or they're in a rental property and they're looking towards the future. Maybe they've got a couple of kids. They're thinking, what do I do next? I think in that situation, people have got a great opportunity. Superannuation is familiar with everybody now and there's an opportunity... So we've got 20 years of that for the average person? Yeah, more, even more than 20 more than years. 20? So it was really in oh, no, the late more. 70s, the, the late 70s oh, okay. that the... But not everyone got that. If you worked no, in show no, business, no. you certainly didn't. No, that's right. But it's been a while now. Um, but superannuation is a very simple tool for saving. Mm-hmm. And anything extra people can do, of course, builds that... To put into your super fund. Yes, dig, exactly. And um, that money's being managed in a way that then it will grow. Is retirement a good thing for people in this age group? My answer to that would be people need to, and I was just chatting to a good friend of yours, people need to have a purpose when they're retiring. It's not just about vegetating. If people don't have a purpose, um, retirement can be miserable. So Mm. retiring to something is very important rather than retiring from something. Yes, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's very important to keep both body and mind active because if you're inactive, you know the result. You'll be laying stiff somewhere. Exactly, and it might even be for people that their skill set can enable them to do one or two days of something they enjoy. Sure. Um, And often for money, apart apart from having a hobby, but often for money, which just helps that whole process. Exactly. Exactly. John, it's been lovely talking with you. Um, There's a a whole lot of other subjects I'd love to have brought up that maybe we can do again fairly soon. And one of those are what really happens when we lose the ability ourselves to control our own destiny, both financially and physically, and where that can take us and who do we go to for help? Yeah. And these must be questions you're asked regularly. They are, yep. and I think it's a very important. Um, as we as we have more people living longer, these questions become more relevant for more families. Yeah. And I think people's capability um, is something that needs a special support around it, and people need to be encouraged to acknowledge when they're not. When it's time. Yeah, Correct. I get it. Correct. John, thank you so much. It's been great talking to you. And come back and we'll talk a lot more about that subject sure. too. So until next time on our time, thanks for your company. Keep yourself nice. Till next time. Thanks, John. See you soon.